Tilo, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are not live. Particularly, like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. This is where you could catch any of the highlights from the live if you miss it. Um, we also got the Patreon. We just started Fresh Meat. We're full show. We four episodes in. We just voted on Sherlock. And then we got two more slots about to open up. So it's like a fresh rotation almost in there. Uh, and we got the Discord. The links to all of these um, things will be down in the description of every single video of every time. Let's get into this, though, man. I just did one of these two days ago, but you know what? Feeling it again on a Friday. Let's get into it. And it's got a vehicle failing to stop. High-speed pursuits oh, are a risky business. 53, we are pursued. Vehicle is lights off, swerving across all lanes, lane two. Because when a bad guy's on the hook... Stand by, stand by. Contact with the subject vehicle. He'll do whatever it takes to get away. He's running, Brown, he's running, he's running, he's running, he's running, running, he's running, he's running, he's running. Drivers of cars have failed to stop for the police. Don't care about anything other than themselves. Near side and offside is on rims. It's contacted member of the public. The velocity of the car, the speeds they go at. There are innocent members of the public who are not expecting them to come through junctions without looking. And they just present a risk to everybody and, and themselves, all just to get away from the police. They show no regard for anybody at all. Here we go. It's mid-morning. It's, uh, it's a black box or mocker. Seven miles northwest of Nottingham, well, well. interceptor Katie Eustace is awaiting intel on a wanted Never. man. It's our first time meeting Katie. Police will be driving without a license. Ah, that's one of briefing, isn't it? Right, hope we're it is, yeah, that's the one. A disqualified driver with previous for violent offences has reportedly been spotted nearby. More bridge, more bridge with One male driver wearing sunglasses. White male. Advanced driver and Harry Potter fan Katie has been working her magic on the county's roads for more than a decade. White male. How old is she? Talking about 11 years she'd been on the first force and then a job before this was a sales admin. So the vehicle, we've had information said the vehicle's been used by a disqualified driver. She'd better buckle up because the morning's just getting going. I ain't gonna lie, it looked like this. <laughs> it looked like she getting the kick out of driving this fast. I don't know. Hey, stop. She better. Her face? Look, she biting her lip. Like, what's going on, Katie? Buckle up because the morning's just getting going. Failing to stop, up the lane, jumping to all full out. Yes, it's failing to stop. Two miles away, Katie's colleagues have just got behind the suspect driver. Speed increase in 76 miles per hour. And he's doing whatever he can to get away. Great fun, this is a drive. Medium is the present. The black Vauxhall he's using to dice with death is, in fact, a higher car. Is it a higher car? But he clearly hasn't read the fine print of the rental agreement. Oh, it's a rental, okay. This man is never going to be able to rent a car again. Ever. He got, and this man is in the rental, high speed chasing. The Vauxhall may be nippy, but its driver is playing with fire. Wrong side of the road. Approaches the mini R8. It's going to be open for second. Robin Bailey Way. A risky run through a housing estate means one of two things. That might be a decamp. And if it's not a decamp, it's a left left, had it close. It's a dangerous attempt to wriggle free. Back on the main. Well, bro almost got his 
front end tore off. Is this a jail? Across the is that a jail or a factory? Back on the main road, the suspect shows a total disregard for other drivers. As he runs a major red at almost 70, he manages to lose the pursuing cops. That's what I was gonna ask. Like, at what point are y'all gonna just back up? Because he's driving crazy. Broad daylight, a lot of traffic out, a lot of pedestrians. But what he doesn't know is that barely a mile up ahead, Katie's riding to the rescue. I think we'll come across him very, very shortly. How tall is Katie? Katie is right up on that steering wheel, ain't she? And she's ready to intercept. I think any moment now. Now the cops giving chase have caught up with him too. At north of 70, a blind overtake nearly brings this pursuit to a disastrous end. After putting countless lives at risk, it looks like this lad's finally run out of ideas. He's on his way back into town. I ain't gonna lie, he just hit the smoothest U turn. Come on, come on, come on, reset, 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 reset. Which means he's now heading straight for Katie. 3482, I am Hucknall Bypass now. It's like there for them. Katie is ready. I, hey, she is overly joyous about Minute. this. As the reckless runaway hurtles towards a roundabout. He's got no idea Katie is lying in wait. Here we go. Oh, Katie took him out. I hope Katie okay because that steering wheel was definitely, definitely in her chest. She couldn't wait to do that. I promise you. She the seat probably wet that she in. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> in a northwestern suburb of Nottingham. They talk call that tactical contact. A runaway rental car has been taking cops on a wild and dangerous ride. But lurking at a roundabout up ahead is interceptor Katie Eustace. Here we go. And she's ready to pounce. As the Vauxhall goes the wrong way around the roundabout, Katie decides enough is enough. Katie didn't care about the camera crew or nothing. The pursuit is over. Oh yeah, it's over. But at what cost? All right, Katie, you good? You're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. All right, all right. Vickle, stop. Oh. Dang, he hopped out skinhead, too. For someone who's just led cops on a white knuckle ride round town, the lad seems remarkably calm. And he's completely unharmed, which is more than can be said for Kate. Hey, young dude, too. What's your name, Becky? Yeah, I think I've just got caught it as the airbag's gone off. Even so, she's had a lucky escape. As he's gone to come out there, I've gone this side of the roundabout to try and get him, get behind him, but he's come head on with me. I didn't want him to go head on the roundabout, going wrong side around this roundabout. It's a main arterial route and that's dangerous. So he's made contact with the side of my police vehicle. 
causing a, uh, a fair amount of damage, unfortunately, to the... I think both of y'all made contact with each other. You definitely wouldn't stop him. X5. Um, which is a shame. But we've got him detained. He's not injured any members of the public, which is good. Absolute idiots. He's showing a complete disregard for the safety of other road users, for us, for himself as well. I mean, that could have ended a lot worse than it did. So, yeah. First question for him with the airbags going off as well. Okay, Katie. I don't know about you. You look crazy, Katie. Hold on, I need some water. Y'all ever had like a, y'all ever ate something or drank something and then the taste of it was just lingering and it was making you nauseous? It's making me nauseous. The driver is breathalyzed and given a drugs wipe. Hey? But both come back negative. Why you run? And he's not carrying any drugs or weapons either. Mate, that's some of the worst driving I've seen. Just pass his attire. Interceptor Lee, who led the pursuit, is left scratching his head. Two driving offences, you know, that we could have dealt with uh, fairly, fairly quickly at the roadside. Um, but he's up the game here and uh, potentially looking at prison time for the, for the way he was driving. I've been in jail 20 years now and you see some amazing things. But e even now, um, it just it just baffles me as to why people don't just pull over and are willing to put themselves at risk. You know, they've got families at the end of the day um, that I'm sure they want to go home to see. So I just don't understand why people, you know, go that far to get away from us. Because we'll always get you at the end of the day. I'm talking about bro had absolutely no reason to run. Some people just want to be a criminal so bad. The lad, who decided to try his luck and go head on with the police, pleaded guilty to dangerous driving, driving whilst disqualified, and driving without insurance or a license. Oh, is that why he ran in? Driving, no insurance, no license, while disqualified? That's probably why he ran, but still, like... Eight months behind bars and was banned from driving for four years. Eight months and a four year ban is not worth what he did. On the front line, there's a specialist unit of fearless crime fighters with a unique set of skills a deafening bark, Stay where you are. Put your hands back. 42 teeth. Oh and a nose that smells trouble a mile off. Stay where you are now! Stay where you are! Stay where Quantum you are. is my general purpose dog, so he's got a variety of skills. At the end of the day, my dog will protect me and nothing will stop him protecting me. He's just amazing, he's an amazing dog. I've got to work on my own, but I feel confident. I've got him in the back of the car and he's always gonna be there on my shoulder. He's like my best friend. Please. It's the early hours of Thursday morning. Yeah, I've got that. I'll stop over to nine. I'm only three miles away. Dog handler Jen Else is blue lighting it to a 999 incident. Off duty cops um, seen some guy trying car doors. He's approached him. He's threatened to bang him out and ran off. The 999 caller is an off duty policeman who's had a close encounter with a suspected car thief. Caller's approached him. Yeah, received. I'm only a um, mile and a half away. Starting to bang him out. What that? What that mean? Jen's no-nonsense style of policing is fueled by two things: salt and vinegar crisps and mashed potatoes. Could I get the ten-piece chicken McNuggets? Wait. Salt and vinegar chips and mashed potatoes, just like a carb overload. What quantum be eating? That's the better question. We worried about quantum out here. Okay, guys. And tonight she's keeping him peeled for a man in black. Babe, 
Okay, stay where you are. Stay where you are. Oh, where you are, yeah. Right jacket, wrong man. Oh, God. Yeah. Glad you told me. Yeah, I'm with officer. I'm with dog, dog woman. Cheers. Turns out it's the off duty cop who dialed oh, 999. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he's come on our drive right down there. Ring, yeah. the, ring doorbell's gone off. Yeah. I've come out for 999. He's come round and flanked me, so he comes head on. Yeah. So I've followed him. So he's gone down into woods. And what's so he, what sort of stature is he? So he's about six foot medium build. Yeah. He's got hood up, yeah. red hooded top. Yeah. And he's all in black. Red hooded top underneath the black jacket? Yeah. Yeah. The suspect has vanished into the woods, so Jen falls in line behind the off duty cop. It's a good job I identified himself. Okay, look at this off duty cop, this Robocop. Like, chill, bro. Jeez, this man is running f faster than the car. To me, quite quickly, because he matches the description, doesn't he? Jen's pedigree chum tonight is five year old German Shepherd Quantum. Quantum. No, no. Wait. He's one of the good guys. Just watch. There's a bit of space. Steady. Steady. Dogs like Quantum have noses 10,000 times as sensitive as ours. They can pick up on nasty whiffs from more than a mile away. I'm not convinced he's come up this way. Seacon. And even though the wet weather makes tracking even trickier, Quantum's onto something. Seacon. Quantum, get on. Get on. He sniffed out a suspicious glove. And that's not all. Leave. Boy. We've also come across a black hooded jacket. Jen reckons the runner could have ditched his black jacket. Just got a large black coat. That's stupid when dogs is on you. You, know, you just gave them a scented and uh, you gave them a scent and a trail to follow. And Quantum clearly agrees. I think the jacket in a minute. Somehow across the sodden surface, this canine cop can smell victory. Good boy, good boy, good lad. Right, stay where you are. Stay. <laughs> Do you understand me? Stay where you are. I'm not doing it, Walk up here now. Keep your hands where I can see them. Can you give me two seconds? Walk up the hill now. Walk up the hill. You no. better walk up that hill before she let Quantum go. Stop playing with that dog. You hear him? Now. Don't start shouting at me. Another suspect apparently caught with his pants down. Just watch the dog. Watch the dog. Keep your distance from the dog. Oh boy. Go over there. Go over there. No. Wait. Go over there. I've got him. Quantum's turned the bloke's legs to jelly. But finally, he makes it out of the ditch and into the arms of district cops. Wait. What are you doing down here, mate? She knows what we're doing. I had my pants around my ankles. That's what I was doing. Sounds like this fella's all mouth and no trousers. Who is this cop lady? Can I ask you what, why? Just sit down. Just sit down. At least tell me why. Just sit down and we'll go through it. Never seen her. Tell just me why. Down, yes, we'll you can't just it. come and get me out of here. No, we can. Oh, you've been stop. Going... No, I'm getting the car. You've had reports, but you've been going up in people's driveways. So I'm get in the car. Homeless, pal. Get in the car. Stop Mate, looking about and I'm, just get in the car. Mate, I'm homeless. Right. We'll deal I'm with that in a minute. All I want to tell you is I'm homeless. I can't help it that I'm homeless, mate. It's a good score for Quantum. Happy days. But the man is claiming to be homeless and denies trying to nick cars. Because of what we've heard, I'm just going to come out and I'm going to have to search you before we do anything with you. As cops begin to frisk him, I did that right thing and told you. Quantum spots something. Get your hand out of your pockets. I've told you, oh. keep your hands out of your pockets. Mess about, you'll go to custody. Sorry. So stop. Mm. Sorry. Boy, boy. Sorry. Come here. Sorry. Where are we? And they discover a syringe in his pocket. No, that's obvious. He's obviously a nitty. Even though there's no sign of any drugs, he's still off to the nick. You a good lad. Yes. Got them for future for future adventures. I'm in awe of what he's capable of because it was it was absolutely soaking. He's took me across that water up that hill. 
gone along that path and then he's literally head down gone. And then as soon as we got there, I knew someone was in there somewhere because his body language just changed. He was digging in hard, telling me someone was there. It was just a matter of finding them. Today of all days means Quantum's gift of a prisoner is extra special for Jen. It's my birthday today, so that was an excellent present. What you doing at work on your birthday? Oh my God, don't tell me you no life in it, Jen. I don't believe that. I think you got a husband or something. Like, don't tell me you have. You could have called off. You could have took a holiday pay or something. Present to end on a fab set of shifts. I'm well proud of him. Really, I'm proud of him. My best mate. Wingman. Are oh, you, son? He was born. Although the attempted car breaking was caught on CCTV, the pictures did not show a clear enough image of the perpetrator for any charges to be brought. As a result, no further action was taken against the suspect. That's tough. All that for nothing. For an interceptor, getting a lungful from a dodgy driver... Mm. Right, OK, deep breath and uh, blow to the machine for me. ..is all part of the daily grind. Thank you. Every week, 30 people are either killed or seriously injured due to drink driving. Have you to drink as well? Yeah. As any cop will tell you, even one small drink just isn't worth the risk. OK, so you've, you've failed that test. It's all Mansfield, 4.31 a.m. It's daybreak, and interceptors Jim Carrington and Ian Coleman are coming to the end of their shift. In 9 eight, we're in Mansfield. We're going to have a look as well. Have we gone into the quarry from the top end then, the King Stand end? They have just received an SOS from a district unit that's tracking a BMW 140 through the centre of Mansfield. Just coming through uh, town, mate, so we're sort of 30 seconds away from you. After a brief blue light run through the empty streets, they spot their colleague. We'll spin on you. And the flashy motor it's tailing. They're gonna get high speed or they're gonna stop. Having pulled a UE, the lads fall in behind the beamer and await further info from the cops at the rear. And each have got uh, preemptive tactics for this vehicle. I think this one has just failed to stop for the cops in Mansfield or has allegedly made off from them, and it's the car that's behind us. So we're trying to find out now exactly what it's done. There's a growing demand for more. I just realized the the, uh, the narrator person, he's saying lad a lot today. I ain't never heard him say that this much. Family man Jim's favorite thing about the force is the camaraderie. Nailing bad guys is just an added bonus. Pause. Local cops are saying it's made off from them. This high spec motor's got some serious legs. Sense. It's just an added. Do we meet all of these cops, or is this everybody that's in the lineup? Everybody that's in this season, or do we meet everybody under here today? Because this is the smell guy he can smell. This is Big E, right? Um, we just met her. She's a crazy girl. This is Quantum, the dog owner. I never met some of these people. But Bonus. We'll see. Local cops are saying it's made off from them. This high spec motor's got some serious legs. And the driver's not shy of testing its pulling power. So it might not have been a foul to stop there. I think it's seen a marked car and just put its foot down, but now it's calmed down a bit. We are left left onto Peacock Street. Oh, that's busy right there. I don't think this goes anywhere. Balls. Yeah, I can see you. Uh, I think we're going to be into a dead end for a natural stop. Stand by. It doesn't look like he's going for a decamp, but the lads can't be too careful. He's just at the back of Papa John's. Now to find out what the score is. Whereabouts have you just come from? I'm from the casino. Right, OK. Some of my colleagues saw you driving a bit fast up at the quarry, Berry Hill. Yeah, yeah, Berry Hill. I was just trying to get home, that's all. Right. Seven, six years. Yes, okie doke. Um, have you got some ID on you? Turns out the lad's licensed and fully insured to drive the swanky motor. 
but he's still acting shifty and Jim reckons he knows why. Have you had a drink at all tonight? Yeah, I've had um, two vodka lemonades. Uh. The lad claims he's had a couple of drinks nearly two hours ago. If he's telling the truth, it could be his lucky day. They sound pretty, like, poised. You should be under the limit. I can't smell much booze on you, if any at all. Um, so I'm not expecting you to be over the limit massively. Well, so we do this at football. I play for Mansfield, you see, don't say it. Oh, do you? See how today's like, I play for Mansfield, that's all. What, first team? Yeah, yeah. Do you? We do these every day. <laughs> The driver says he's familiar with the breathalyzer as he uses them every day in training as a professional footballer for Mansfield Town. Oh wow. Keep going, 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 keep going. Keep blowing, mate, that's it. I can't imagine you'll be over the limit, mate. It's thinking about it, mind you. Our survey says. Yeah, what's 51 mean? Yeah, 51's not good. What's that mean? 51 means you're over the drink drive limit. Damn! Surely not. Surely yes. I've had two vodka lemonades. Uh, What's the limit? The limit is anything over 35 we'll arrest you for at the police station. If you blow anything over 40, that can mean you end up in court. Um, that is only a screening device. You know what's crazy? Bro look like he pulling into his house. This is where they get you at. I swear, bro is on the outskirts. Like, he was opening the gate to get in his crib. It's not necessarily accurate, but it's a fail. It does give us the ability to arrest you, I'm afraid. Well, I'm going to get sacked in the morning. I don't know, I've had two bucks in minute. This midfielder scored a major own goal. Yeah, I'll sort that. Right, hang on. We'll see you at the neck. I think the world's just fallen out of his backside, bless him. I think he's thinking he's going to lose his position at the club in the morning, but he's decided to get in, get behind the wheel of his motor when he's been drinking. So we'll take him in, sort him, go from there. He'll probably blow under 40 at the precinct, though, and then get, get sent home. Have you got his keys? I have got his keys. Nice motor, but I don't think I'll be buying one of them. Why? <laughs> Can you get, not fit in it? I couldn't get in it, and it was even worse than me trying to get out of it. Back at Mansfield, Nick. Come on, mate, we'll get you sorted. Roy of the Ravers is still claiming he's only had a couple. It might be just because you're a fit lad, so it's affected, it's spiked a bit more, but only you will know how much you've had to drink, mate. It seems quite... That's true. When, you have, when you're more in shape, it, it affects you more. If you're just fat and gluttonous, <laughs> it's just going to dissipate within the fat. A high to me for two vodka and lemonades. I've been wrong before. But one thing that's never wrong is the intoxilizer. Off you go. That's what it's called. Keep blank. One thing that's never. That who named it that? Y'all playing Inspector Gadget games out here. Intoxilizer. The wrong is the intoxilizer. Off you go. Keep blank. 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 Spot on, mate. Let's take a slow. I honestly wouldn't even have told them that I was a professional footballer. 49 and 49. So take a seat, mate. That's not what you wanted to see. The boozy ball player will be locked up until he's sobered up. And Jim and Ian can reflect on a good result. As soon as he said, I've been down to the casino, his eyes are a bit pink and glazed. Um, I'm sure he's been enjoying himself. Uh, he weren't rolling around junk though. He was quite lucid and chatting to us. Alcohol affects everybody differently. Uh, and there is no safe limit. Uh, you know, people think they can have so much to drink and still get in the car and they'll be fine. Uh, I think we've proved that's not the case tonight. The Beamer driver pleaded guilty to drink driving. He was fined £576 and was banned from driving for 12 months. Oh, yeah, he got to take an Uber to practice. That's tough. Coming up. Nottinghamshire Police have the UK's only dedicated knife crime team outside of London. Oh yeah, running, running there, love test scores. Since forming in 2017, stand still. Knife crime has fallen by 18%, and a recent amnesty took almost 400 blades off the streets. Man, I had a 
katana blade. Flawless victory. Ken Tinley and Joe Riley from the team know that on the street, drugs and weapons often go hand in hand. And today they're targeting an area plagued by both. It's one of the inner suburbs of Nottingham uh, and it does have an issue with drug dealing. I, I don't think the people that go about their day to day business probably appreciate fully what's going on, perhaps in these houses or in the most. You know what's crazy? Today I'm supposed to drop three videos. But guess what video got blocked? Benidorm, season six, episode one. And I'm talking, it got blocked and it got denied. So I can't post it on here at all, but I posted it to um, Patreon, so. If I can't do no more Benidorms, it's over. It's a vehicles that are traveling around it, but there is an issue. There is an interest from individuals that would be on our radar carrying weapons and the, and and those things that lead to, to people to want to carry and use weapons. So, yeah, it's definitely one of the areas we're going to get more results than not. After seven years on the force, Ken's learned a thing or two about being in the right place at the right time. OK, so this is Ken. So maybe they do go across all, everybody on the bottom, and I just never paid attention. We're one behind you anyway, Gov. Now there's a golf with a marker for drugs just around the corner. There it is. Premier shop to the near side. Colleagues in a marked unit have already got behind it. Walk straight over. And in a flash, it's game over. You all right, chaps? Just turn the engine off for me, buddy. While Joe gets stuck into a Q&A with the driver. Is it your vehicle? Yeah, it's my vehicle. Come back to you. What's your name, buddy? Ken's getting to grips with one of the passengers. Anything on you shouldn't have? Hello. Anything on that's going to hurt me or you? Okay. Oh, I'm PC Tinley from St. Anne's, all right, works part of the knife crime team. <coughs> you got any weed on you today? <laughs> the passenger insists he's clean. But now Joe's had a good rummage through the driver's pockets. Then we get in the car. It's a little spliff off the stuff. Is that even cannabis? What is it? It's cannabis, isn't it? That's what I'm saying. It's sure. Split. You can smell it if you want. It's a tiny amount of weed. It's not much there, is there? Nothing. Joe reckons there must be more, and soon he cops a feel of something much bigger. <laughs> so what is it in there? Nothing. What is it? I've just heard it when you've done it. I, you can search me. I will be searching you, mate. You'll be coming back for a strip search now, won't you? Nothing on me, man. I've just heard what you've rustled rus and rus you've rus tried. I haven't done nothing. Could we take a seat, mate? Strip search. What do you just feel? First of all, pause to the narrator. I don't know what he on. Joe reckons the driver's got something stuffed down his pants. Take a seat, buddy. Are you going to be honest with me? What's in there? Obviously, I'm not going to lie. I've got a few drawers on. Yeah? What is it? Just weed? Yeah, just a few, a few yeah. grams of cannabis. Man. Right, OK. So he's got something concealed down his trousers. Just asked him what it is. He reckons it's a couple of drawers of cannabis. So he's going to come back. We'll, we'll get that out and take it from there, see what we've got. Yeah. So don't put your hands down your trousers, are we all right? Meanwhile, Ken and the passenger... Just in this car down here, mate. ...are off to a separate motor for a quiet chat. Obviously, I've searched you and I've had a good look as best I can, yeah. but it, it's still possible that there are things down your pants. I'm not saying they are. So you know what? What? I'm not even on that's the bike. Here we go. I've done this last time as well, man. What's happening? Yeah. What, are what are you doing? No, no, you can't do that. Put your chance up. Put your chance up. Uh, they've done this last time to me on the roadside. Well, I'm not doing that. this with you, so come and sit in our car, all right? They've done it last time with me on the roadside. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so. Well, that's fine. The passenger's practically falling over himself to prove his innocence. He's trying to get nude out here, like, chill. Can I just pull my trousers up, please? Can I get up the hands for once? Well, you pulled him down, didn't you? So... Yeah, I know the other stuff. Should, like, I ain't got nothing to hide, you get what I'm saying? Right, I know, I know. I'm not saying you have. Ken's satisfied the passenger's got no drugs on him. But some other items arousing suspicion have been found in the car. In this case, we've got a, a motor vehicle, and I can see there's half a dozen burner-style mobile phones in the car, which is kind of consistent with the sorts of communication tools for drug dealing. So to have a little bit of cannabis down your pants, fine, that may, may well be what's going on here, but there's other elements that are quite visible, so... Yeah, I'm going to pull up to his crib, ain't y'all? 
I know it. Fine, we'll take him at face value that he might have some cannabis and he's willing to give us that from his pants. But for all we know, there might be something a bit more down there. While the two passengers are free to go, Ken and Joe escort the driver back to the Nick for a strip search. Have you been strip searched for? Yeah, I have. And the suspicious bulge is soon revealed. So the end result of this one is a um, small quantity of cannabis. Uh, not, not single amounts, but um, sufficient that we would consider this to be a possession-only case. Um, whether there was any more prior to... Oh, man, what a waste of time. Stopping him, we're never really going to know. The case against the driver arrested for possession of cannabis was discontinued. And the passengers faced... Now it's even bigger. <laughs> ...no action. What a waste of time. That's two waste of times. They may be the newest team on the force, but like all interceptors, they still rely on three of the most traditional weapons in a copper's toolbox. Their eyes, their ears, and a good old-fashioned nose for something fishy. Explore exciting career opportunities. I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't expecting them to say nose. Ken and Joe are heading back out on patrol. Sneerton? Little bit quick. S N E I T O N. A shifty looking Astra has caught Joe's eye. Sure, it's not held. Can't worry. It's come back as uninsured, so the boys spin on it. To form it, we just had one go past us on Cramner quite fast. An 06 Voxel Astra. No insurance on it. We just spin in, see if we can catch it up. When you lose sight of a motor, you sometimes have to make difficult decisions. Up or down. It's a gamble, it's a gamble. Um, In this instance, left or right. Can't see anything up there, mate. Go on. Ken's gambled it all on left. Joe's not convinced. Should have went right. Rust over there. But a flash of silver up ahead might change his mind. Not guaranteed to be the same one, but whoa, what are you doing? What are you doing to pull into the officer hide? Eyes right, fellas. Yeah, yeah. So get on it. Oh, they got lucky. All right, buddy. All right, boy. Yeah. Your vehicle. My mate, yeah. Yeah, step out, buddy. No as well as the driver, there's three lively-looking passengers. So Ken's on crowd control. Stay there, stay in the car. Stay in the car. Take a seat in there, mate. So you say it's your mate's car? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Sure, what's his name? Now he's had a closer look, Ken thinks he recognises one of the lads. Oh, you know me, man. I know you. So to a drug bed now, yeah? And the stench coming from the car is also familiar. Stinks of weed, we'll do a 23. We'll just wait for them to get here. Ken and Joe are outnumbered two to one, so keep the lads contained until backup arrives. So it concerns me that you've actually got a balaclava in the car, with me. I've always got a balaclava. You know we have Riley Pelly. Right. He's just trying to keep warm. He wants his cheekbones warm. Where the Bali? Balaclava. Telly. Tell him. With a second unit now on the scene, the lads are finally released from the confines of the smoky motor. Oh, mate, right. just stay in the doorway then. You got anything you shouldn't have? No, got no feeling. Yo, move with that camera, bro. The passengers insist they've got nothing on them. But after the afternoon he's had, Ken knows all the best hiding places. Boy, yo, that's a bit close for my liking, you know. Oh, you sucked your tummy, didn't you? Yo, listen, that's a bit close for my liking, that's rude right. boy. I'm just checking you've not got anything down your pants. <laughs> that's no. good. Yo, don't look, yeah? It's but fine. No feeling, Bruce. Just want to look at my piece. Look I don't want to look at your piece. piece. I'm just doing what I have to do, aren't yeah. I? Swim round for me, mate. The lad's clean, but when they pulled up, Joe reckons he clocked some shifty shenanigans going on in the Astra. Driver spun round, could potentially give something to this lad, or underneath this seat, something like that. OK, Hawkeye. And I pulled up. It doesn't take them long to locate the mystery item. So who did that then? 
Well, it won't find near me anyway, so you can't do me for them. Well, mine, you got me. Dang! Oh, dry snitch! Do that then. Well, it won't find me for me. You can't do me anyway, so you can't do me for them. Be quiet! Well, mine, you got me. <laughs> So there's some weed under the driver's seat. Someone needs to account for this weed or we're going to have to treat you all as suspects, OK? But I'm not saying anyone should account for it. What I'm asking is for people to think carefully as to where this cannabis has come from that's under the driver's seat. OK, that's fine. We'll leave it there for now, then. While the lads figure out whose weed it is, Ken's figuring out who the familiar face is. I've immediately recognised at least one person from the car. Um, that I know is linked to some sort of street gang OCG, and there's an immediate smell of cannabis coming from the car. Wait, what's going? I know is linked to some sort of street gang OCG, and there's an immediate smell of cannabis coming from the car. So the the key was to get sufficient units here so that we could deal with all four of them because there was four people in the car, and then conduct a search under the Misuse of Drugs Act. Oh, dude, why is not even asked? You lot, you get me. The charmer in the back has finally admitted the drugs are his. So Joe runs some checks on his ID. No picture. Yeah, come on, what on the system are you lot, mad? Ain't daft, mate. I don't do no wrong. Get me, I'll get my weed to smoke. That's it, you get That's me. That's honest, true. No yeah. fit. Um, and what about driver, this lad here? The lad's clean. But checks on his mate, the driver, are more fruitful. The driver of this vehicle is disqualified. Uh, and there's no insurance. So we're going to take the vehicle. And um, you'll, you'll need to be interviewed about the alleged offences under the Road Traffic Act. Um, rear seat passenger behind the driver is he's saying that's his drugs, so he needs to be spoken to about that as well. Ken suspects it may be a pool car, a motor with no paperwork that gets used by different people until the cops catch up with it. I would put money on this vehicle ending up in a small little box in a cube shape in the next two weeks or so, because I can't can't foresee anyone's going to come and collect it. The driver pleaded guilty to driving without a license. What a waste of a car or insurance. He was disqualified for 18 months and given a 20-week suspended sentence. The passenger was arrested for possession of a Class B drug and given a police caution. No one came to collect the car, so it was scrapped. Talking to camera. What, man, going to be on police interceptors? Yeah. <laughs> How are you doing me like this? No, I'm not even bothered. You can show my face as well if you want. Still to come, he's Walton University. Ron knew the show and everything. He was policing his head. Hey, show my face. You get me. <coughs> Excuse me. It's a bright and sunny Thursday, and interceptors Phil Broughton and Paul Matthews are soaking up the rain on the F38. It's totally spotted. Phil's got eyes on a silver motor up ahead. Although it's so banged up, it's hard to tell the make or model. Texted shores. This silver shed is in fact a 15-year-old Peugeot and it's coming back as registered to someone by the name of Caitlin. Negative. Ah, oh, well, I'll be chatting, anyway. Time to find out what she's got to say for herself. Just a routine stop check. Yeah, fine. What's your, what's your name? Sorry? What's your name? OK, have you got your uh, driving licence to hand? I have all got it all. OK. It seems unlikely that this is Caitlin. You got any idea on you? No. No? Is it your vehicle? Yes. How long you had it? A month ago. A month? Yeah. OK. It may be a recent purchase, but it's hardly what you'd call a new set of wheels. Do you have a driving licence? Yeah. Yeah, what sort of licence? Romanian one. Romanian? Where is it? It's in my country. In your country? Why haven't you got it? Why haven't you brought it with you? I haven't got it with me. Right. Veteran interceptor and award-winning cop Phil once got attacked by a ferret whilst on duty. 
but today he reckons someone else's pants are on fire. Don't they call him something like the nose or something? Well, say to Fear was probably intimidated. Because if you lie to me... Wait, what's the fear? Do you understand lie? Yeah. The, Dishonest? Yeah, yeah. Then it bumps the offence up to something more serious, OK? So, are you genuinely telling me you have a licence and you have insurance? Uh, it's green. The insurance is green, so... It doesn't matter if it's green. They... Are you are you insured to drive it? From top, from top side tyres, slick. All right. Uh, I didn't know about insurance. He says if it's green, I can drive, so... Right. An insurance green card allows motorists to drive abroad under their home policy. The problem with this bloke's green card is that it's got someone else's name on it. That's not you? No, no, no. And that's the only person who's insured? I don't know how to check it. So, although it's green, yeah. on the MIB, yeah. doesn't mean that you can drive it, because you need your own policy of insurance or you need to be a named driver. Have I put the insurance in your name? I, I don't know how you to don't. check Phil runs some checks on the bloke's ID and, surprise, surprise, turns out it's not his first time. You've been dealt with for no insurance before, haven't you? So you know how it works. I didn't... I just pay in £50 to someone, they open it for me. Right. make it green. OK. Phil smells blood, so goes in for the kill. You say you've got a Romanian licence, but it's back in Romania. How long have you been in the UK? A long time. A long time. So what's your driving licence doing in Romania? Because what are you driving under? Because you should have it with you. At this point, my boy, you just got to be quiet. <laughs> I would have, yeah, I ain't going to say nothing. And that's why I believe you haven't got one. He's got the driver cornered. And it looks like the man's story isn't the only thing that's falling apart at the seams. Uh, front tyre is slick. Got no tread on it at all. So minimum tread depth should be uh, 1.6 mil. As you can see on that, it's smooth. You can barely, you can just about see the tread. This section here is completely smooth, and that there is the cord, which is the what the, it's effectively made up of underneath. So a tire. The wires. Uh, you should be replacing when it gets down to three mil, because it's been shown anything below three mil uh, is ineffective at dispersing water. Uh, but the legal limit is 1.6. So as you can see. It's it's, uh, it's illegal, so you'll get a prohibition for this. So the vehicle won't be allowed to drive any further until that's fixed. The tyres are smoother than a Barry White record. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, it's zero there. But Paul spotted some rough edges. We've got some sharp edges, so the idea is if the general rule of thumb, if you're walking down a vehicle with your hand down, if you catch anything, it's roughly where a small child's head or body could be. Is it possibly going to cause a laceration? then that would be classed as a dangerous part, so that you can prohibit for that as well. So is, there's been a rear impact on the vehicle. It's cracked the, um, cracked the bumper and it's exposing a sharp edge. In its current state, the car is dangerous and needs to be taken off the road immediately. How'd you pay for it? I didn't know they was mechanics. This is always going to shock me, seeing them pull over somebody and go do a car inspection. Yes. How much? Hundred pound. Four hundred. Oh, four hundred. Yes. But this bang is not heading for the junkyard just yet. This is just a roadside inspection, so I can't check everything. And I'm not a mechanic at the end of the day. Uh, well, you talking like you is. Um, so I'll send it for an MOT. You'll have to get that tire changed. Uh, be dealt with for that by Phil. So hopefully it won't uh, pose a danger to anyone. So what's going to happen today is I'm going to give you some paperwork. You're going to end up going to court for the offence of driving, otherwise in accordance with a licence, driving without insurance, and potentially driving with a uh, a tyre below the legal limit. The motor's heading straight to the lockup. If, by some miracle, it passes its MOT and the man can provide a licence and proof of insurance, he can get it back. On that, I just need a signature from you. Just there for me. I've got some paperwork for you too. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, everything's explained on the back, if you forget, but the main bit is when that paperwork comes through the post, you read it. Thank you for all thank you. And don't drive again. I'm not going to drive anymore. Good. It's estimated that as many as one in every 40 drivers on our roads don't actually hold a proper licence. If Phil's instincts are correct, this bloke could be facing a £1,000 fine.
My strong belief is there is no Romanian license. Uh, he's just using that as an excuse. Uh, so potentially we've got somebody on the road that's never had any lessons, never passed a driving test. Ever? Uh, driving around uh, unsupervised. So what do you do? Well, it's coming from Romania, man. I got some Romanian friends and I, okay. So we've got a driver that's got no license, he's got no insurance, and he's got a vehicle that's not in the best, uh, best state. Uh, and pretty much it's a danger on the road. So it's one of our main priorities is to get it off the road and get that danger away uh, and get him before the courts uh, to get a disqualification in place again. The man pleaded guilty to driving without a license and no insurance. For this and the bald tire, he was fined a total of 283 pounds and got six points on his license. It's not known whether his new motor ever did pass its MOT. TLO, leave a like, comment. I'm gone. We always enjoy police interceptors, man. Shout out to the first responders who hit that like button.